It's beginning to look a lot like wartime. Hey, uh, hello everybody. Welcome to Tuna School. I am your host, Crimson King. Uh, hopefully you brought an apple. Today we're going to continue with what I hope to be um, evergreen content, the kind of stuff that any new player, uh, regardless of how long this game uh, survives, uh, anybody new can, can come to Eve Echoes and find find their way in the galaxy. Um, uh, first off, we covered uh, basically lo basic logistics, setting up bases, and um, how you can supply your forces. Then we talked about um, how you can fund your forces. Today I'm going to talk about another way to fund your forces. This is how I entered the game. That doesn't mean it's the right way or the wrong way. There are no, there, There's no one way about navigating the world as we know it, or uh, or the world within EVE, uh, the universe. So I'm, I'm just going to talk to kind of my journey and, and what I learned along the way. And, and maybe it'll help you, maybe not. We'll see. Um, but without further ado, let us get into it. Now, what is planetary interaction? So planetary interaction is where you go to one of the planets, uh, and there's there's a little option in your in your menu, um, specifically looks like a, a planet, um, that you, you go to one of those planets and you set up a mine, right? You don't have to go to it, you just have to go to the system where it's in to set up the mine. But you, you, you put down roots and over time that mine will produce a resource. And it could be whatever resource you want from that planet, um, and each of those resources have different rates, different values, and different uses. Hmm, excuse me. So why how in, in what way is that interesting like people look at planetary interaction and they often bounce right off i mean it's not very flashy there's no guns involved it's kind of relegated to the realm of industry pilots uh in terms of of actual purpose and use but as a passive form of income as a as a player who's looking to get into the game for the long haul um, that's how you can fund a lot of your fun without actually having to put in very much work, right? A lot of people talk about the use of um, player-owned stations as a new player. That's not going to be an option for you. You're not going to have those automatic resource extractors available. So I, I want to try and like entice you to skill into the sciences um, because that's those that's uh, that's where you can find your planetary interaction skills. Uh, if you max it out, um, I believe you get six planets and each of them gets an obscene number of mines on them and you can just crank. You, you can make about, um, I, I don't know what the top end is on what you can make. I imagine it's obscene uh, depending on the market, but I've, I've clocked in as much as five million isk an hour for doing nothing. Um, and that's that comes with experience, it comes with risk, it comes with exposure, and it's it's free money, basically. Um, this is why I laugh whenever I go exploring and I find some random loot box just floating along. Uh, that's if if you don't grab that money, I'ma do it right, because like that is time that you have invested that you're not capitalizing on it. Uh, often when you're roaming in Nullsec, you'll see um, heavy water. I, I like to call them fountains. Um, People will post up heavy, uh, post up heavy water uh, extractors, and then just uh, forget about them because the rate of production on heavy water is extremely quick, and it's very hard to stay on top of that unless you actively know what you're doing. There are a bunch of dirt side tools for finding um, different planets. Uh, you can there's there's a whole mess of them. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna recommend any ones in particular just to keep this evergreen. I know. Some of the industrial tuna within the main body uh, use some of the tools in Discord, but there are a bunch of other resources online, uh, different sites that you can go to, plug in, I'm looking for plasmoids, what's the best planet near me for producing plasmoids? Um, if you use something uh, frequently, just make sure you toss the developer a tip, right? Because those guys work really hard um, getting those things set up and making sure that they're maintained. And they often don't get the praise uh, or the attention that they deserve. So, pick up your money, or I'ma do it. Now, to, to, to follow on to that, like, planetary interaction is basically speculation. You, you don't do any real work aside from collecting your paycheck, which, I don't know if you guys have been to Null recently, but it's dangerous. It's its own sort of work. But, but getting the goods from where they are produced to where they can produce income for you is the interesting part, right? Um, 
it's it's a, a lot of lead and a lot of waiting and patience. Um, basically, you're you're gambling that you're going to get those uh, goods back to where they belong, and then you're also gambling that you can get a good price for them, right? So so there's there's a little bit of uh, there's a little bit of prediction that goes into it. I, I I say a little bit. I mean a lot of bit of prediction because over time you'll find that it's a lot more fun to build up stockpiles and manipulate the market using uh, your tall stack of chips, kind of like playing poker, right? Whoever has the tall stack has the advantage. Except you are playing poker with the universe, and there are no, there's no guarantee that that you know your hand is going to win out. You, you have no idea what your hand is until it's time to sell. So it's it's very interesting if you have the patience for it. Um, recently, NetEase enabled uh, the ability to launch all of your planets at once. A lot of folks pushed back on that idea. They thought it was um, inconvenient and frustrating. To them, I say, manage your planets. If you are complaining about convenience, I think there is there's an issue with your approach, right? That's That's one of those systems that it rubs people the wrong way, but if handled and, and used appropriately, you can you can do some interesting things with it. Um, basically, so long as you go and pick up your goods and someone else doesn't go pick up your goods, you, you, you get paid. And it's, oh, hey, Kodama, of course I'm recording. You want to come in and join the party. Hey there, sweetheart. There we go. So it takes about 20 minutes um, for a full load of whatever you produce to form a... Uh, a loot container um, at max skill. It takes, I believe, less time if you have fewer skills, but you also get far fewer resources, right? So hitting launch, waiting 20 minutes, picking up your stuff, and then heading home. That is that is the routine. That is the mission. And there are a number of ways to approach that and a number of ships that you can use. I tend to prefer um, covert ops frigates or explorer frigates, right? I, I tend to use my PI as the sort of waypoints um, in my exploration routes, just because I'm not I'm not so attentive to the market what with the war going on at the moment. But there are another number of other approaches. If you want the safest bet, uh, a cargo scepter will get you there, get your goods, and get you home relatively safely. There are folks who can shoot interceptors out of the sky. Those guys are amazing. Um, they've got a really quick lock. Watch out and be careful. You can't really do anything in this game without you know, risking something, but it's, it's, I find it's easier when I'm in control of the ship. Um, the use of covert ops ships in general uh, is, is fascinating and fun. I like the imicus among all of the covert ops ships for, for picking up the goods. Um, but if I were to say launch all on all of one particular type, right? Let's say I found, um, six prime perfect plasmoid planets in a loop and I wanted to collect all of them, I would need a ship with a massive cargo hold, which is say a Narius 2, a Wreath 2, or, or one of the other uh, higher tier transports. It's a riskier endeavor, but it's also a fatter paycheck. So as in most things in Eve Echoes, you choose the difficulty. You set how high you want to aim or, or what you want to aim at, and hopefully your skills will get you there. Um, and, and the cool thing about that is, is it's very similar to life though. A lot of what we aim at and what is available to aim at is dictated to us by our circumstances and environments. It's the, the interaction between those forces that I find absolutely fascinating. And yeah, it is, it is an extension of the market of all of the resources in the market. Um, planetary materials are the only ones that are strictly purely time-based, right? You, you... You don't have to expend nearly as much effort for these resources as you do for others, which means they're they're one of the few places where human players have a distinct advantage over um, the blob or botters or multiboxers, unless those multiboxers are also you know juggling all their stuff. But that's a lot of maintenance and monitoring and tracking, and you have to log in daily on each of those accounts. It's it's a good way for NetEase to keep players coming back um, as, a, as a habit because you have to update and refresh your timers every day if you want to get paid for them, right? So it's it's passive, but to an extent. Um, there, there are some good fail-safes in there for keeping people from abusing the system. 
Um, and there's also the good old fashioned fail safe of finding where they launch their stuff, killing them when they arrive and then stealing their stuff. Um, also fun. There are three main classes of materials, um, for planetary interaction. There's fuel, which most folks or, or many ships with, uh, special utility, uh, modules used to burn. It's also used by stations. So there is always a demand for fuel and, um, not always the same amount supplied. Um, this is, again, evergreen content, but for example, heavy water uh, recently spiked as high as, I believe, 24 isk per. I might be getting that incorrect. I know, I guarantee I've seen it as high as 17. But it used to sell for 7. It used to sell for 4. That was before the, uh, the fuel update that made it so whatever fuel you'd fill your tank with is lost when your ship dies. And, and I think that that is a wonderful change. It's made um, PI especially interesting at this moment, at the moment of release. Uh, we'll see how future changes affect the market uh, moving forward, right? The war, for example, is going to heavily, heavily, heavily impact um, the resources needed for shipbuilding or for building building. Any form of destruction, anytime there is action within the game, planetary materials gets a bump they, they become more worthwhile because there's only there's a limited input right and a variable output so you want to time your moves on the market to capitalize on those uh, market forces um, there's there's the the market value of your goods is what changes but it's also important to remember the utility value the actual good value uh, of your resources as you build up over time right? Let's say you want to dip a toe into industry. Well, having PI already under control and well-managed will allow you to get whatever resources you need uh, in addition to raw minerals, blueprints, etc. And not to mention the modules and stuff for fitting those ships. But whatever resources you need to actually build those ships, build those uh, structures, build to your heart's content, um, that's, that's how you do it is you build up over time, you create stockpiles, you make moves using those stockpiles, and you make profit, ideally. Um, the cool thing about Planetary, too, is, is it's all profit, with the exception of the 20 minutes it takes to pick them up. You can easily uh, work that into any weekly schedule, in my opinion, even if it's like, I, I need to use the restroom. Um, I'm going to launch my PI. I'm going to go, you know, do the do, uh, do the deed and grab my PI once I'm done. Uh, hopefully after you've washed your hands, you, you, you filthy animals, you, um, it's, it's extremely easy to enter into a merchant type role or a smuggling type role. If that's the play style or fantasy that you want to fulfill using planetary interaction. Um, but people know this, all of this information goes to you, uh, but also to your enemies. Your enemies are going to be looking for planetary, uh, materials out there in the wild. This is how they make the bulk of my income. Uh, folks will leave heavy water or some other fuel lying around and, and forget about it or, you know, not really pay attention to it. And I will go grab it. Um, uh, one of the cool things uh, about doing that is you know what planet that PI comes from now. You know that the guards are asleep at that planet and they will launch their stuff without paying attention to it. So bookmark it. Come back later. Check in once a week. See what, what's going on in that neighborhood and gather as many resources and as much free money uh, as you can. Another cool thing, if you pay attention to um, your, uh, your, your scanner, not necessarily scanner, what's it called? Uh, on the right-hand side of your screen, you can see different anomalies and different signals in space, right? And if you have loot turned on for any of those and you fly by, you have about one to three seconds, depending on the distance and location of that loot, to tap it and hit the loot button. And what will happen is when you land on your distant uh, destination, assuming you don't get ganked by um, one of the many killers out there, your ship will turn around and fly right back to that loot box that it found. Um, and you can grab it for, for free. Um, it's often not the best thing that you can do, especially in an operational environment, but that's what bookmarks are for. You can, you can go back and repeat that jump and take multiple shots. 
Another thing you can do for drive-by looting is dropping bookmarks midway through to shorten the time that you have to wait for that opportunity. It's like playing whack-a-mole with money. Um, and, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, but people know this. People are aware of this. And whoever you steal your PI from, whoever you steal PI from, they get a little notification letting them know, hey, someone, uh, and I believe it associates your name with them, with it, stole from you. And, and they can check and see uh, which one of their loot boxes is missing and set a trap for you in the future. One of my favorite experiences was uh, down in the South. Um, there was a, a dude who, they uh, I don't remember what organization I was stealing from. Probably someone I wasn't supposed to be stealing from, but uh, I, I was waiting for movement on Diplo. That's, that's usually how things go with me. And I, I just basically spent a solid week robbing them blind. Um, I've got a, a massive stockpile down there that I'm afraid to touch because every time I go moving down there to try and like get it out, I get ganked uh, right quick. I have I have made enemies with these tactics, um, frenemies, if you will. Um, but one of the cool things that happened was I became predictable uh, around lunchtime every day when I when I take my you know take my meal. I would go grab the goods and and drop them off at the nearest NPC station. Well, someone set up with a worm, um, and and as soon as they saw me on grid, as soon as they saw me move towards the loot box, they also warped to the loot box. I managed to empty it, I managed to grab all the goods, but the worm tackled me and brought me down. Now, who wins in that scenario? Um, the loot got destroyed for the most part. The worm could have picked up the rest of the excess, whatever they could salvage from my poor dead corpse. Um, but I don't think that was what they were looking for. Uh, I, I, if they wanted the loot, they could have just grabbed it, right? The answer there is everyone wins in that scenario. If you pay attention to this game, there is always, always, always a PvP combat experiment opportunity uh, available to you. There, there is stuff going on out there. You just have to take a look. You just have to be patient enough to keep an eye on, on what's going on. Um, now, specifically the reason they used the worm too, drones will drop your cloak. If anything gets within two kilometers of your cloak, it drops. Everybody uh, by this point who's dabbled with cloaks at all should be very well aware of this. And anybody who's traveled with drones should be very well aware of the capabilities that they represent. Um, drone ships make the best uh, decloakers, period. Um, and if, if you want like a discount worm, something that's not going to win any fights, but can do the job decently well. Good old Tristan will do that just fine. Uh, so that's the story behind To Catch a Thief there. The damaged goods, the worm got paid, I got slapped on the wrist, and we both got a story to tell. Um, but other things you can do, um, if you find one of those fancy little loot pinatas we call covert ops frigates running around out there, try following them home, especially if you're also in a covert ops frigate or some other sneaky, sneaky ship. Uh, a lot of the small pilots that I've interacted with in the north are very aware of this tactic, and they will use it to great effect. If you see a name following you, but you cannot see the ship associated with it, well, you probably got a covert ops craft on your on your tail, and you should be very scared. Um, there are there are some ways to mitigate those risks, and I'm going to talk about them on this next Monday's Keep It Brief. But it's it's a fun and unique challenge to try and hail someone, right? Without being turned on and, and spotted or uh, without being lost. Um, it's, it's probably the most fun a smuggler can have, honestly. Other things that you can do to maximize your profits. Um, it's relatively easy to calculate how much your planetary investments are worth over time. Because on each of the little planets, it tells you uh, the rate of return. And, and that's a very important number. It tells you how much of that resource you get per hour. And you can look to the market. There's a nice little button in the item description that, that leads to the market values. But you can look to the market and predict the value, whatever the value is for that particular day. And depending on what your goal is, if you want to fill up um, your, uh, your launch box to uh, the full thousand like I do, or if you want to just grab whatever's in there and launch all um, like is most efficient. Uh, or if you want to standardize your operations, for example, you can calculate all that stuff and, and 
basically give yourself a budget of fun or a budget for fun for the week. Um, just remember that logistics and operating costs will always have their due. It's going to cost you time, effort, uh, loss, tears, whatever, whatever you want to spend, um, to make this isk. It's the least expense for the most profit within the game, as far as I'm aware, but it's not the most profit period, right? The, the rate of effort for isk is one of those topics that um, I could talk about for, for years, and, and I intend to. Um, ways to beat bookmarks. Ah, yes, transcending bookmarks. So sharing locations of planetary materials from enemies uh, with your friends is a great way to make sure that either the enemy stops launching their stuff without being watched, um, which that's usually what I do when I watch my stuff too, is I'll, I'll post up about... Mm, within range to grab it in a cloaky ship and I'll just watch and wait as it as it does its thing. If someone comes by and snags it, I can swoop in and steal it and hopefully run for the hills. Um, but if if someone comes through and also posts up and watches, uh, now I've got some intel on what to expect when I try and retrieve my uh, my paycheck once it's done cooking. So there's there's a lot of nuance and depth available within this system if you have the patience to make it work. And most folks, most folks in this game don't, but there are, there are a rare few who pay very close attention to their resources, their timers. So, uh, once a day, don't forget to reset your timers. That's kind of the, the, the full breadth and depth, uh, that I'm going to cover when it comes to planetary interaction. I could talk about the individual resources themselves and why I think, um, folks are focusing too much on plasmoids and folks are focusing too much on heavy water and not on the more efficient, more time and effort efficient uh, fuel sources. I could talk a bit about um, how I expect to see the war really uh, affect uh, the build rate. Since since up until the 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 grand silent, uh, silent shout, I, I suppose I should call it, um, Folks were focused on building battleships, right? And those have their own uh, battleships and, and um, strategic assets, carriers, dreadnoughts, the big things, uh, right? And I think this war has opened up a lot of eyes that smaller ships have a role on the battlefield, um, especially when it comes to skirmishing tactics, defending territory, aggressing. Uh, a stealth bomber fleet is terrifying, and, and this is why I mass produce them. Uh, in the hopes that should these wars uh, break out and the need become ready, uh, I can sell at a massive markup, which that's what the market's looking like right now. Like there's a lot that, that plays into it. Um, and the gateway to the markets, in my opinion, uh, are, are the planets. So let's talk scheduling for the next week. Um, my Wednesdays, Sundays, and Fridays are usually free. I'm actually going to be busy this Sunday, so uh, tomorrow is probably going to be my free day. I'm tempted to try streaming. We'll see if that experiment pans out. It really depends on if I can wrestle with OBS long enough to produce something that I'm, I'm happy sharing with folks. And I'll probably stream some exploration and get ganked um, and... and Hopefully we can all laugh at uh, the ganker's attempts to pin me down or my attempts to survive uh, getting pinned down. We'll, we'll see how that goes tomorrow, uh, if it happens at all. No guarantee. But Friday will continue to be pizza day, the best day of the week um, for the foreseeable future. And then Mondays for the Keep It Brief, Thursdays for the Echoes of New Eden podcast. I am, um, man, we, we had like, in my opinion, the best show to date. I, I, I say that, probably with the bias of having just, you know, listened to it for the first time, but it's, it's on par or better with our conversation with Captain Benzi. And I love that guy. He produces awesome content and I can't wait to see more from him. Um, hopefully we get him on the show again sometime in the future or other content creators too, you know, like the echoes of new Eden podcast is kind of the, uh, the catch all, um, place to be. If, if you want a feel for the life of new Eden, check out EONE or the Echoes of New or, or or the radio show, um, the the New Eden radio show with Mackenzie and and uh, Roslyn. Both both I think have the emotional uh, vibe. If you want the actual news, Damon Zell, he's amazing. And uh, now I'm now I'm sending love letters to all of the uh, 
all the bloody content creators out there. Um, I'm, I'm going to post a link to the collection of YouTube channels that I've gathered over the years. Um, and, and maybe that'll prove useful for you. Maybe you can rely on the algorithm. I don't know. It's up to you. But there's a large body of work surrounding Eve Echoes out there. Uh, you just got to know where to look um, and have the patience to dig in a lot of cases. Thankfully, PI will train you to have that patience, right? Okay. Uh, here's the future episodes. Battle Buddies I'm drafting right now. I try and get about a week of lead on each of, the, uh, on each of these. And that's basically talking about um, branching out from being a solo player and learning the ropes to potentially learning the ropes with someone else or working with someone else in a fleet. Um, and then for the holidays, uh, for New Year's and Christmas, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, whatever you celebrate, uh, Festivus for the rest of us, I'm going to do a little fiction piece on Seventh Circle Bar and Pleasure House. It's a, it's a, um, it's a bit of story and nonsense. It's probably not terribly interesting to anybody but me, but it's a lot of fun, and I deserve a break from lecturing uh, every now and then. After that, uh, Battle Rhythm, Good Fight Mentality, uh, Standards, Doctrine, and You. You can read the slide for the rest. Ooh, someone actually reached out to me and asked for a uh, tutorial on exploration. And that's that's in the cards. That was uh, one of the things that got me hooked hooked on the game was the release of scanners and exploring the different options within exploration. A lot of folks view it as just go meander, wander, find these random things out there. And they get really frustrated because they're not looking in the right places. Um, in the exploration brief, I'm, I'm especially stoked to be offering you uh, not necessarily the right places because I want to make money. Um, thank you but how to find the right places, where to look and how to like tailor exploration to your gaming desires. Um, I've also got a, uh, an ask me anything um, form, but I haven't received any responses on that. So I might change that uh, to some other topic in the near future. We'll, we'll see how I'm feeling at the end of uh, drafting for battle buddies. And then corporate economics, that's I'm going to pull the kimono all the way back on Team Tuna and explain like, some of my methods and techniques, um, some of my approaches, I, I am very much behind the eight ball on actually producing um, isk for tuna. Uh, unfortunately, I, I've cleaned out my <laughs> I've cleaned out my wallet, and we'll talk about that on Monday. Um, but that's that's what you have to look forward to. You you poor poor soul. Um, also, I was wrong as of last night. Uh, Z killers caught me out on the cheapest drone ship. If you want to know the answer to that, uh, go ahead and give the podcast, the, the hol not necessarily the holiday special, but man, it was special for the holidays. Um, go ahead and give that a listen and, and see if you can spot where I was incorrect. And last but not least, extra credit. So here's where I post other YouTube channels that are not necessarily Eve Echoes related, um, but are tangentially related, right? The kind of things that I find interesting. And... Normally, it's, it's, it's a channel that's tried and true. It's one that I've watched either from beginning to end because I am an addict or uh, one that I've, I've tasted enough to know, yes, this is the kind of, of delicious thinkiness that I'm into. Uh, and I'll, I'll keep that in the, in, in the backlog um, for, you know, either listening to or watching while I cook, doing some other task. It's, it's the background stuff. I've tasted this. I tried Space Time, Our Universe Explained, with Dr. Matt O'Dowd. Um, PBS Space Time is the actual channel name. So I tried it a couple times, and this is one of those channels that you really got to pay attention to. You can't really put it on in the background and easily comprehend and, and, and imbibe uh, the content. But it's worth imbibing. If you want to have your mind blown, this, this is the ticket. If you want to have a, a deeper understanding of how the universe works and space as a subject this this is awesome it's up there with uh i don't know if i would recommend it over star talk or one of the other associated space type channels but i thought it might be fun to have like a little mini book club this is this is one that i intend to watch in the future and if you want to tag along please let me know what episodes you like what kind of things are, are worth checking out share those in the comments um last but not least i'm going to give you the usual advertisement oh nope do I not have the advertisement in the slide deck? I might not have the advertisement in the slide deck. Uh, 
that's okay. Um, me and a buddy are working on a card game called Dungeon Blackjack. If you are interested in helping me and that buddy, we've already had a few nibbles, but nobody's actually joined us for a game. If you're interested, hit me up. Either either message me on Discord. You can find me at the at the podcast Discord, or comment on here, and uh, I will I will make an effort to give you the information, the time, the space, maybe even a copy of the game if if you know if you show enough interest. And, or at least the draft, uh, the prototype. It, it ain't a full game yet. It's still got a ways to go. We're, we're balancing right now, and it's it's really complicated. The more folks we have testing and, and giving feedback, the better it'll be. And with that, I've come to the conclusion of Tuna School, Episode 3. Hopefully you have a deeper understanding of planetary interaction and the depth that it presents or offers. Um, there's a lot of other nuances that go into it, like routing, uh, planning out your week, um, making sure that your planets are near wherever your operations occur. There's, there's a lot of potential um, for you to go down that rabbit hole if you so desire, right? Um, and I think that's wonderful. And, and hopefully you as a new player or as an experienced hand coming through and listening to me ramble um, can also see that. All right. I hope you all have a good weekend and I will talk to you on Monday. Bye.